Oxalic acid vaporization is a standalone treatment for varroa mites. Is it effective? Good afternoon, welcome to Fishing for Bees. May 2nd, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, like 72 degrees. Had to use the portable mic today because I'm not sure you'd be able to hear me over this. So, oxalic acid vaporization is a standalone treatment meaning not using anything else available on the market. Apivar, Formic Pro, green frames, drone frames you're able to pull out and dispose of the brood in the hopes to control the mites. All right, so here we go. Oxalic acid vaporization is a standalone treatment. Let me just start by saying that this information I'm giving on schedules and stuff are my thoughts based on research and what I've seen on social media the last couple seasons coming out of winter from other people's posts. So we have people coming out of winter with dead colonies. We've had it going on for months now, right, on social media. I'm very active on Facebook and stuff like that. And their colonies are dead. And the first question is, did you treat? And they say, yes, I treated. What did you treat with? Oxalic acid. Did you treat with anything else? Did you do any other type of procedure such as green frames or manipulation or anything like that? And the answer is no. Oxalic acid vaporization is effective at killing the adult mite. At killing the mite that's wandering around the colony and killing the mite that is currently on a host bee. What it's not effective at is killing the mites, the, the juvenile mites, the pupa under the cell. It doesn't kill them. So when you ask yourself, is OA effective as a standalone treatment, you also have to have the ability to be honest with yourself. And I certainly am not picking on anybody because I'm going to use myself as an example up front. I have a schedule in mind that I would like to see. I'll get into that in a minute. To be used when you're using oxalic acid vaporization. Also keep in mind I do use Formic Pro. I tell myself in the fall that I'm going to do this schedule and I miss it completely. And the reason why is because from what I understand and the research that I've done and research that other people have done, to be effective, the schedule has to be very precise. So meaning you want to do, again, this is how I see it, this is how I do it. I want to do five to seven treatments three to five days apart. Already, in my operation, I'm setting myself up for failure. So I need to ask myself before I decide on my schedule, again, mine is five to seven treatments, three to five days apart, I need to be honest with myself. Am I gonna really do that? If the answer is no, I need to think an alternative treatment in addition to the oxalic acid vaporization. At the end of said schedule, I need to ask myself, did I meet the rigid schedule that I set forth? If the answer is no, depending on what time of year, I need to think of a secondary alternative form of mite treatment. It's very hard to maintain that schedule. We're talking about one series at that schedule. In all honesty, as far as I see it, if you're going to do oxalic acid vaporization effectively, you need to have two series, if not three series, of that same exact schedule that you've decided on. The reason is, is because you need to kill the developing mites as they come out of the cells before they become mature and enter back into the cell to then reproduce. That's where the three to five days comes in and then also the five to seven treatments. You're only killing the adult mites. You're not killing under the cell. That's why I use Formic Pro, because I'm killing mites underneath the cell. If you are thinking about Apivar or if you've used Apivar in the past and you are having situations with it, read into the research that's come out that mites are becoming immune to the Apivar treatment, meaning they're becoming resistant to the Apivar treatment. They've evolved past the Apivar treatment. I've never used Apivar. I decided not to use Ap Apivar from the beginning. I was going to use oxalic acid, which at that time could not be used with Honey Supers on. That has since changed. I still do not use it with Honey Supers on. And I went with Formic Pro because you can use it with Supers on. And I did that my first year. And I don't do that anymore. I don't do any mite treatments 
with Supers on anymore. That's just how I handle it. If we want to talk about it, that's great. But um, that's just what I've decided on. I'm not going to do any mite treatments with Supers on for human consumption. I'm just not comfortable with it. Uh, oxalic acid sense has come out. If you buy the right product and the right brand, and it can, as far as I know, be used with Honey Supers on. But if you are using an old oxalic acid and it doesn't say it on the label, or you're buying a cheaper version that doesn't say it on the label, and yes, I understand the percentages are the same and everything exactly the same, but if it's not on the label, it's against the law for you to be using on your bees. This isn't a debate on the laws. I'm not saying the laws are correct or incorrect. I'm not a scientist. I'm just simply saying if it's not specifically on it, it's against the law for you to be using. So back to the honey supers. I just don't do it with the honey supers. So today I'm up here treating. These colonies have not been treated at all this year in 2024. This is their first time. They look pretty healthy. Um, I like what I'm seeing. Hey, we have a previous video on six down there. We had a queen failure and we requeened it with some queen cells. We'll see what happens. But so anyways, oxalic acid vaporization as a standalone treatment can be effective if you follow a extremely strict schedule. And if you miss that schedule, like I said, I have done, you need to think of another alternative or you need to restart the schedule. So you've already done two and you missed the third. Now you need to restart the schedule. One of these cycles alone, let's just take, you know, seven treatments, five days apart. That's 35 days, right? And say you have to do that two to three times a year. You're talking 70 or 105 days out of honey production. Again, you can treat with the correct one where it says it on the label with honey supers on. So... I'm talking about how I run my operation. That's 105 days out of honey production. Now let's back out all the days that we don't have for honey production. Five months out of the year, let's say, that's 150 days, right? So we're at 255 to 260 days out of honey production because of our mite schedule and because there's nothing available in the environment. That leaves 105 days for honey collection. And that's just not enough for me uh, because I isolate flows and I get two to three draws a year. I just can't do it. And I have to be honest with myself that as much as I'd like to think that I can knock out my mites with oxalic acid vaporization treatments regularly and not have to do anything else, the evidence is just not there. And the evidence was apparent on Facebook late winter, early spring this year. Again, like every year, so many people treated and felt good about treating, but yet their colonies collapsed because of mite loads. Trying to use oxalic acid vaporization as a standalone treatment without the strict schedule. We need the strict schedule for it to be effective. So, I asked myself, why did this? Why is this happening? Why are people assuming that just hitting their colony a couple times with oxalic acid vaporization is effective? And I really can't come up with a great answer. Maybe you can help in the comments, but this is my thought. You know, it feels good to treat our colonies if you believe that you need to be treating your colonies. It feels cool to buy an expensive unit that gives you a visual of treating your colonies, right? You got to put on a mask you got to put on safety equipment it gives you a big cloud of vaporization it looks like you're doing something much different than dropping a strip in much different than dropping a pad in right and it feels like you're doing the most effective treatment possible and maybe that is true for the adult mites on the bee the adult mites in the colony as far as all the other aspects of mite control under the cell um, how they reproduce, the days that they reproduce, the days in the cell, the uh, how many days to maturity for the adults. Oxalic acid vaporization as a standalone treatment is not effective for these individuals who aren't following a strict schedule. I'm 
would love to chat more about this. I'd love to hear your comments. I'd like to talk about this because I think we can do some good before next winter and next spring where these new beekeepers are sad that their colonies collapse, but yet they treated with oxalic acid vaporization and nothing else. It was a pretty sad winter and spring and uh, it was sad last year as well and this has come about, this topic has come about because of the last couple years of observing people's posts and commenting on people's posts and communicating with people and finding out that there's a lot of people that are trying to use oxalic acid vaporization and yet not on a strict schedule. They're just randomly hitting their colonies and thinking they're doing something. You're doing something for that day. The next day's coming more than the adults in the colony as far as mites are being born out of those cells, right? The female does not just lay one offspring. Don't quote me on it, but I want to say it's like five females and one male. It's actually pretty fascinating, but she's laying at a rapid rate and those girls are pre-producing and coming out to lay again those mites. So that's my two cents on it. We're going to get into treating some colonies here with the Low Rob V's uh, original vaporizer, the plug-in unit. Love it. I have used it hard and um, I've had to make some repairs to it. I lost some insulation and there was an upgrade on that and the, the, the heating element died. I had to do that. But listen, you're using this thing. You're bringing it up to 400 degrees and then you're cooling it rapidly back to 400 degrees and cooling it rapidly. We know that that is a wear part and that's what it is. It's a wear part. If you're going to buy a vaporizer, make sure you buy one that you can get parts for. I strongly recommend lowrobbees.com. Their vaporizers, um, customer service, everything. So here we go. So while this unit heats up here, I'm also going to talk about the time of day. This is not the most ideal time of day. It's a nice day. There's still a bunch of foragers out. That means there's mites out on bees and they're not coming back for this treatment. This treatment's done once it vapor, once it, once it gasses off, once it's not visual anymore. I'm sure there's some residual effect, but the mite drop happens as far as I understand it. When the gases hit them, they no longer hold on and they drop. So that's how I understand it. So time of day also along with your rigid schedule. You got to take all that into consideration if you're going to try and do oxalic acid vaporization as a standalone treatment. So here we go. That looks like it's up to temp. I just take simply take a towel and cover the front entrance. In the back here I have a golf tee covering my hole. Up here I already have my pre-measured cup. 440 degrees. Clear that puppy out. Put it on here securely so you don't get blasted in the face with hot gases. Slide it in upside down. Flip it over. I like to tap it. I like to verify a significant temperature drop. We're in the 200s. That tells me Everything from this cup fell into the reservoir. Now I'm going to walk away and not breathe this stuff. It likes to stay in that cup sometimes, so there's nothing more disappointing than to be done with this and pull it apart and realize that a big chunk got crystallized in the cup and didn't fall in. So now I just visually observe to make sure it looks as if it was the right dose I intended to give them. So I only have one like this. The hole just seems to be a little bit lower than the other ones and it's just too low. And sometimes with the positioning of this, it wants to rest on there and it's burned it. So obviously I don't like that. So you're gonna come in with your unit like this as we did in the video, right? It's gonna be charged. I like the Quinn tool, it gives me multiple options. One of the things you can do is put a nail above it, right? And always hang your Quinn tool like this with a nail in here or a nail in here and it's always in the right spot as a heat shield. I probably would do it more like this. 
give you more of a heat shield on the bottom. So you come in and mine will rest like this on that piece of wood on this problem child, giving me a heat shield, keeping me from catching that on fire. I do like my other idea better. I'm gonna put a nail in here. Problem is, is this box is gonna be rotated. That's why I've never done it is cause you know, but it'll last a season until next year if I put it in now. If I would have done it earlier, it would have been in this box. So now I can do it because this box is gonna be down here until next spring likely. So you need a heat shield. Don't catch your colony on fire. So on oxalic acid vaporization is a standalone treatment. I'm not telling you you can't do it. I'm not telling you not to do it. When I'm, and I'm not even recommending my schedule because I think you can even do better than what I've done or what I've come up with as far as that schedule based on the incubation, adulthood, and all that of the mite cycle. You've got to focus on the mite cycle to figure out a good schedule. So I'm not saying you can't do it. What I'm saying is if you are considering do it, you owe your bees some effort to dig into it to dial it in to get it right so that your bees can survive the winter. Anyways, we're going to finish these out. Thanks for watching. I hope your bees are well.